this was a movie about Latino superheroes. Cool. <laughs> and, uh, that, that's what I got from it. And uh, my character, I think her name was even like Lydia at the time or something. It wasn't even like Lydia. They were trying all these different names. And, um, and uh, it said that she was described as like a, a tough crybaby, pretty much. And I was like, oh, okay, I booked it already. Like, Y'all are typecasting me. And, so I was like, I'm gonna do great at this audition. And uh, I put, I, I actually, um, I, I happen to be, so I think, all right, I'm gonna give you my audition story. And we probably wanna hear it, all right, that's cool. <laughs> so, uh, an audition that I would normally do through like an MP3 on my phone. That's how I've done a lot of my like commercial voiceover auditions. I just like record it on my phone and send it off into the ether and hope someone wants to hire me. And this was early 2020, and we all remember that time. So it's me. And um, I I don't know if anyone else here is an artist or a, a performing artist um, uh, who feels that feeling of. Um, you know, things aren't really, my, my career isn't really going anywhere. Things be like, they aren't moving. <laughs> A little applause for back. So I'm like, that's me right now. And then I'm here at Comic Con. Um, but uh, so in New York, I was like, wow, nothing is happening. Guess I should just go to LA and see what happens. And um, I think we all kind of had that moment. That seems to be something that's relatable, at least in America. And uh, I went to LA, planned to be out there for the month of March 2020, and we all know what happened in March 2020. Um, but while I'm there, literally the second day I was there, I, I got this breakdown for the audition, and I was like, whoa. And they're like, also, since you happen to be in LA, if you want to go to Disney Animation in person, uh, you can. So I was like, I'll take a $50 Uber, and I was like, what money? So I went, drove to Burbank, and I go to the magical Disney animation, and like I am extremely obsessed with Disney. Like this is, I have been freaking out this entire time, just letting you guys know. The fangirling never stops. Um, so here I am, I get a chance to go to Disney Animation and audition there, and because I auditioned in person, I never made all the difference, and it definitely was some type of universal energy going on because I got to meet with um, uh, J.B. Sparrow Roberts, who's the casting director, she's so amazing, and we just got to chatting, and she was like, yeah, this like, feels very much like you. Meanwhile, I don't really know that much about the movie or the character yet, so I'm just being told, like, nah, you got this. I'm like, okay, and she's like, I sang I'll Make a Man Out of You from Mulan. Oh. Yeah. 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 Like, oh, this is such a good idea to do that song. Like, they actually gave me two options. They said I could sing that song or Call Me Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that so random? I was like, not even a Disney song. Like, I was like, okay, I'm gonna sing I'll Make a Man Out of You. Also, like, in my range. <laughs> so I was like, I'm gonna do that. And she was like, this is great. And she also told me, I'm gonna have you uh, go to a callback in New York for this. But when you do the song there, don't do all the different voices. <laughs> because of course, it, I'll make a man out of you. Like there's five different characters, and I did every voice. So, like, there's a voiceover audition, right? <laughs> like this is my first voiceover film I've ever done. So I, I really didn't know like um, uh, how to approach this. I guess you know I, I was just like, okay, I'm going to show her everything that that I could do, and um, then. Pandemic happened, and I had to go back home to Miami, where I originally from, in my childhood home with my bunk bed, and I lived there with my parents for four months. <laughs> yes, that was year 25 for me. It's supposed to be like a sexy year, right? <laughs> I'm just scared of death. Um, and uh, just in my bunk bed with my family. Um, not with my family in my bunk bed, but you know. Um, it was an amazing time, uh, but I completely forgot about this. I, Because, you know, we didn't know if we'd be able to make art in the same way again, let alone make art at all. Um, we were just grateful to be together, and uh, it was, it, it, like, when I say, like, the universal energy and, like, when this film, working on this film, came into my life, the fact that it happened during the pandemic, like, it all happened for a reason. I, at that time, I got a new sense of my family, and I started seeing sides of them that I wasn't, you know, we didn't expect to see. Um, 
I got a whole new appreciation for my family, where I come from, my family, my lineage, and uh, uh, then I moved back to New York, June 2020, um, and it sounded that I had a call back in July, so I did that over Zoom uh, with uh, Jared Bush and Byron Howard, uh, the amazing directors of this project, um, and they started talking about their families with me and asking me about my own family and the role that I felt I personally played within it, and I was like, oh, the most I've ever talked about family in an audition, and we're getting kind of deep here. I was like, what is this? And that was when I realized, okay, this is going to be about, like, I started to sense, uh, not generational trauma specifically, but um, some, you know, like just uh, the intricacies of, of the family home, like what goes on, all of the different characters. Um, all the nuances that a family has, and I think the message behind the film, all of the messages became even more amplified because of the pandemic and how we had to push the story through it all. And um, yeah, uh, I, I then began, I found out that I booked it October 2020 uh, on my couch. Um, yeah. Day three of no shower, <laughs> watching my like 60th film of the day. Um, Bridgerton had a come out of the point. I can't believe it. <laughs> I'm like, what was 